Hello and welcome to MakeLock number 15. Today I'm going to show you this radio control flamethrower. First we will see a demonstration, after that I'm going to show you how to use it and finally I'm going to show you how it works. On the correct data packet, flames start shooting out of it. Here I have filmed the flamethrower in slow motion. To the right of the spray can you can see the white servo arm which pulls down the lever at the top of the spray can. If this lever is lowered the valve of the spray can is opened. Short time after that the high voltage coil is connected to the battery via MOSFET. The generated sparks ignite the spray. How do we use the radio controlled flamethrower? Because it's radio controlled of course we need a transmitter. It's this joystick I have shown before. It's a Microsoft Sidewinder 3D Pro joystick equipped with a microcontroller inside and a radio transmitter. So let's power the joystick up and uh, we see this LED indicates that it's transmitting. Next we switch the radio controlled flamethrower on. The display indicates the burn time, so you know how long a spray can is lasting. This is the battery indicator, so you know if you can use the flamethrower again, or if you need to charge it via micro USB here. This is the fire button, but it has no effect because by default the flamethrower starts in safe mode. We can't go from safe mode to fire mode directly. It's blocked by a dead time of 2 seconds when the LEDs light up in orange and the buzzer is sounding to indicate that you should be careful and move away from this device. So I'm switching it to fire mode now. And when the LEDs at the back and at the front are red, you know now it's into fire mode. I'm going to fire now. You can see that it was activated for 800 milliseconds and each time I'm pressing this button it's counting. We can go back into safe mode immediately at any time and by doing this the trigger button is blocked. Until now we have learned about three modes. The first mode is the safe mode, indicated by an off LED or a green lit LED. Then this was the dead time, the second mode, and now we are in fire mode, indicated by the red lighting LED. I will now interrupt the transmitter's power supply to simulate a loss of signal. As you can see, if a loss of signal occurs while firing, the RC flamethrower will go into sender off mode and flash the LEDs in blue, so you know even from a distance that there is a problem in the transmission. I now restore the transmitter's power supply. When a valid signal is received, the flamethrower switches back to the mode before the loss of signal occurred. To conclude this chapter, we revise the four modes of the flamethrower. The first mode is the safe mode with the LEDs lit up in green. The second mode is the dead time for security when the LEDs are lit up in orange. The third mode is the fire mode with the LEDs lit up in red. And the last mode is the loss of signal mode when the LEDs are flashing in blue. You have now made it to chapter 3. In previous videos some people have asked me how my things work. I would like to focus on that in this chapter and have a more detailed look onto the components used. One component is a high voltage coil which is unfortunately not sold anymore. By applying power to one end you get a high voltage at the other end. You can also use that coil to light up xenon lamps from camera flashes for example. In my case I used the spark to ignite the spray coming out of a spray can. Here you see the first test run when the sparks were 2 mm from the nozzle of the spray can. This was a very compact size, but unfortunately the spray did not ignite. I guess it's because there was no oxygen in the spray. To overcome this problem I wanted the spark to be 1.5 cm away from the nozzle of the spray can, which resulted in building new electrodes. 
Now let's have a look at the components. I'm using two of these 1100mAh lithium ion batteries in parallel. To charge the battery I'm using a TP4056. A DC DC boost converter is used to supply 5 volts. An APC220 radio transceiver doesn't fulfill all my needs, but I got it for very cheap. The microcontroller used is an Atmega 328P programmed via this 6 pin ISP connector. To visually indicate the actual mode of the flamethrower, I'm using two Dico LEDs. An OLED display is used to indicate the burn time and the battery status. The high voltage coil is directly connected to the battery via MOSFET. In this setup, the buzzer and the microservo are not shown. Now I'm showing the components at a point of time when the flamethrower was nearly finished. When the high voltage coil is in operation, peak voltages occur. I've used this capacitor acting as a buffer to protect the rest of the electronics. Here we see the microservo, this is uh, the charging PCB, this is the RF transceiver, this is the PCB of the microcontroller, Next to it is the OLED display, which I've put into epoxy resin. Here's the 6-pin ISP connector to program the microcontroller. This is the buzzer to warn you if you activate the flamethrower. This is the high voltage coil here. At the back we will find one Dico LED, which is soldered to a PCB to better connect it. In series to this LED, there's another Dico LED on a PCB at the front of the flamethrower. Here you can see the mechanism of the servo and the lever, which opens the valve of the spray can. I hope you liked this video and I hope to see you again.